All right. Uh, first of all, um, I should say thank you for, for Kai. He already left. So if today I'm just basically be late on the time, you guys should blame him. <laughs> so because I, you know, I'm starting late. Anyway, so my name is Xiao Chen Lu. And uh, today, actually, this presentation is not from me. It's from my colleague. Uh, he called uh, Wulas. And uh, due to restrictions, so he couldn't make it the trip down here. So that's why I'm just on his behalf to represent in this um, the presentation. Today, we're going to talk about the reference clock in the synchronization. Um, suppose this topic in the tap group. However, because this one, for some reason, now we're in the telco. I'm so glad in this group because I'm the last one to present it. Last one should be the best. OK, so talking about the, the, uh, the synchronization system is more specific talking about the 5G implementation and the changing the map for the synchronization now moving from the, the outside into the data center. So that's why we're going to talk about that. And also, what's going to be the architecture implementation for the synchronization's implementation in the uh, 5G network. Meanwhile, we also like to talk about how to make the, the choice on the reference clock. You have the different kind of the, uh, the clocking source, how you make it the choice. So uh, early of today, uh, this afternoon's session, there was a gentleman asking to say how to do those kind of things. Now it's the time. I'm so glad you come back. OK. So why are we talking about those kind of the data centers uh, implemented with the synchronization? Well, it's a, first of all, from the application aspect, let's just look at this. Time is money. Any financial network nowadays, per the compliance requirements, you have to provide the time step, which is required high accuracy and the, the proof of the compliance. So those things is quite common. And meanwhile, there's also Industrial 4.0 that introduced with the, uh, the new concept called the time-sensitive network. It's also required with the latency and the, the high accuracy. Among all those kind of applications, the most important <laughs> drive for the synchronization into the data center is because of 5G. 5G revolutionary change those kind of the original, you know, from the uh, towers, cell tower, and behind the central office. But nowadays, those kind of the map totally change. So even introduced with the ORAN, Open Radio Access Network concept, is totally making this original map with the brand new map. So though all those kind of things, when we move those kind of the DU, CU functionality into the data center, the original wireless network required the synchronization must move into data center. As simple as it is, because the moving, movement toward into the data center. Therefore, data center must provide synchronization. Well, OCP, OCP TAP group, and also our group, our community actually that already starting with those kind of uh, initiatives for the synchronization. Typical things, uh, just like this morning session, we talk about the data center profile for the IEEE 80, uh, 1588 PDP. In that. Uh, Implementation, five microsecond is already required for the end-to-end -end time accuracy. Well, if you think that's stringent 
requirements for the timing. Just reading the next few, uh, few, few lines, you will find out it's quite generous. For the TSN, time-sensitive network, it's required, even required, one microsecond end-to-end -end time accuracy. But when we look at this 5G, DUCU functionality, move to the data center, it's in a nanosecond magnitude. So all those kinds of things is already been defined for the today's 5G applications, implementations. How we're going to do? Well, from those kind of the, the drive requirements, now we're mapping to simply simplify mapping to the two in a two dimensional uh, uh, the measurement. One dimensional measurement is the so-called frequency accuracy. Uh, that is defined in the IEEE 801.cm. In that define, the frequency accuracy must maintain within 50 ppb range. That's very, very stringent requirements. Look at another dimensional measurement, which is phase accuracy. There's the, all kinds of the ITU spec uh, defined for that. Well, everybody talking about today, everybody talking about uh, master clock, grandmaster, boundary clock. And this morning, we even in the tab group, we discussion, discussion to say, hey, can we just using the transparent, uh, transparent clock to replace with the boundary clock, such kind of the thing. But no matter what you talk about it, the minimum, minimum requirements for between the radio heads are you 139 a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we used to talk about a millisecond, right? SDH, all those kind of the old telco standards, ITU requirements. Then we go to the microsecond. Nowadays, nanosecond. So that's the reality we deal with. How are we going to make this happen? Well, architecture-wise, you this one we already talking about is, is also in OCP tab database profile. So three kind of the layers. The first one, the, the first one, we need to have the uh, the grandmaster clock for the data center. And hierarchy-wise, the second one, a second layer, is so-called uh, the fabric switch layer. That one is, can be either uh, boundary clock or transparent clock. Which one gonna be used? That's questionable. That's, that's based upon your choice. But no matter what, this is required. And on the, the so-called server layer, which is DU, most of the DU located. That's in the server layer. There's also the requirements for either the boundary clock or it's the following so-called AT, uh, the, uh, either assistant and the partial timing class requirements. So that's, that's another uh, the layers. So basically hierarchy this hierarchy formalized this new architecture for the synchronization in the data center. Well, we have everything down there. Let's just look at the traditional, traditional timing system, synchronization system. It's very typical modeling called a servo, server system. Typical implementation, just like you know the traditional like a PLL, but this one is more in the uh, in the, the broad meaning for the server system. Well, the one thing with the server system is this: the very dynamic uh, behavior, system behavior is very dynamic. Let's look at this. So, as the input, external 
timing results. You're going to have the GNSS. You're going to have the uh, IEEE 1588 PDB. You may even have the physical layers timing cells, which is just like a Sinker E. I'm wondering today, not a lot of talking about the Sinker E, probably just because of physical layer. However, this is one of the major timing results. So also in the server system, another important part is loop filter. So the loop filter play important rule to filter out those kind of the noise coming from, can be coming from the uh, GNSS signal, can coming from, also from the local, uh, the oscillator itself. So that's, the, that, that's another factor, impact of this dynamic behavior. Of course, local oscillator itself can bring in some other uh, errors or noise. So all those kind of the system is, is determined the output from the server system actually is very dynamic. And um, so all the efforts needed to, to control those kind of the errors within the requirements. So let's look at what, uh, which kind of the things we needed to do in this servo system dynamic situation. So in order to, um, in order to make sure there's timing synchronization system within the requirements range, first we need to make sure we have the input with the high quality signal, just like a GNSS signal. And also like a you know, uh, class C, class D, clock, timing cells, boundary clock. And also like uh, the, uh, just previously mentioned about the APTC, APT, uh, APTC clock cells level for the server, server layers requirement. Talking about the filter specifications, here are those kind of this, uh, the requirements. For the GNSS signal, it's a very, very narrow band filtering needed to be implemented. So it's, for the GNSS signal, it's less than 30 millihertz. That's the requirement. And also, um, for the, uh, the partial timing filtering, it's required sub-millihertz requirement. For the boundary clock, for the boundary clock, the filtering is less than 50 millihertz. Very, very narrow bandwidth needed to be implemented for the filtering. Well, the third factor in this system, actually the most important factor, is local reference clock parameter. So for the local Local, uh, the, uh, the clock oscillator, it's, there are a lot of the factors impact, such as temperature, gravity, aging, all those factors. But most of them, uh, significant impact factor is the temperature. So I can show you that this figure, the graph, well, for some reason it's not show up there. Ah, here. Here we go. We don't have the laser. Oh. I hope that works. Ah. So this graph showed to say, hey, if we just have the oscillator with the, with the sensitivity, so-called temperature sensitivity, 0 0.05 ppb, that's quite nice. But if you look at this accumulative the error, the face error, actually we seen the 200 seconds, you already got to the 100 nanosecond off. That's, it's already put this oscillator into the edge of the, the requirement. So this graph shows you just one of that kind of the thing. When you're selecting the oscillator, 
what you need to be careful to see, you know, make sure it's satisfy your the implementation's requirements. Yeah, the second graph is just sh showed to see if you're selecting, in this case, if you're selecting even better, more stable oscillator, you can have much better, but that's still within that edge. So this one, less than one nanosecond output phase error, you need to have less than 0 0.1 ppb per center degree temperature sensitive oscillator. Now let's talk about the holdover. Uh, the previous uh, session also talking about those oscillators capacity. If you lost, okay, you should, the, the synchronization requires all those kind of the input, GPS, PDB grandmaster, synchro E physical layers. However, each of them can be, can be lost due to all kinds of the reasons. Uh, GPS can be lost very easily, right? The, even the wider can impact it, adding the face error. Um, the PDP, well, in the network, I'm not sure you heard the, that uh, last, the previous night, actually it's the Xfinity lost all internet service. Well, when the data center lost those kind of the, any timing cells, it's gonna be disaster. It, I just don't want that, you know, those kind of the, Xfinity disaster happen again. So that's why the holding over capacity is become the one major, uh, one major consideration for the, for the reference clock selection. So the sequential scenario is that, well, of course, GNSS signal is the PRTC always. And, but if we lost the, the GNT, uh, G, if we lost the GPS signal, then we hold over the timing to the PDP. But if PDP got lost, let's just go to the, uh, the, the physical layer timing source, sync E. Now, if all those kind of things lost, let's just last line is using the local oscillator. That's why the oscillator, local oscillator, become the major player. So question is this, how long the local oscillator can hold its frequency within those kind of the time error requirements? That's the measurement for, for the performance of the, the oscillator. So pay special attention to it. Okay, so. Here, we actually propose, the, the, there's the formula here. How you do, how you do the, uh, the measurement about those kind of the, uh, the holdover capacity. This one give the, the holdover uh, the error measurement modeling by this mass. Well, definitely we do not have the time to go to the mass today. So, what you can bring away from today's presentation is this. Pay special attention only a few things. Initial phase and initial phase and frequency offset. That will impact with the holding over capacity for the oscillator. And also the agent. Agent actually in here is basically in the square, time square, uh, great. So that's why, given the time, this guy will play the major factor. So that's the major thing. Also, another thing is, well, definitely, is will environment, the synchronization, uh, the oscillator's environment factors, and also the random factors, those factors eventually also apply the very big impact with the whole, uh, the holding on work capacity. So, yeah, the graph, this one is basically just the graph show some unpredictable behavior uh, for during the holdover, just the example. The top one, you can see this curve that show the temperature basically is 
uh, due to the temperature change and uh, ha what's happened with the, the frequency hold accuracy during the holding over time. So you can see this one, even at the beginning, during the initial stage, there's the error increase, but after the certain time, its oscillator is quite stable with the temperature change. But this one, you can say, well, with the temperature, it's going to variable. They may even reduce the, the error. So this one just show how those factors impacted with the, uh, to the, your holding over capacity with nonlinear situation. Well, talking about those kind of things, I hope not to scare the people away from those synchronization implementation. Yes, complicated selections, all those kind of the, the parameters, and also different vendors give you the different kind of the data sheets. Doesn't matter. The major thing is this. Good news is today, technology for the oscillator itself is quite advanced. So this one is a well known. For the oscillator's choice, you have the wide range of the choice. You can selecting from the TCXO to the, all the high-end OCXO. Meanwhile, all those kind of things with different kind of the, uh, the cost. So based upon your budget, based upon your requirements, you do have today, you do have the, the choice for your, for your implementation. So the, the major thing is that focus on those two major factors. One is the time sensitivity about the oscillator. Another one is the aging parameters pay special attention because those two are the major factors impacted with that. We give you this table, bring that with you. Next time, when you have the needs reference to the table, you will have the answer. I think my time is up. OK. Mr. Kai, uh, Kai is still here? Oh, yeah. OK. So I, I may borrow a few minutes from you. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. It's OK. Time, time is go home. <laughs> OK, so let me just uh, summarize three points. One thing is this. Today, when you talk about the data center, synchronization is must. It's not option anymore. When you look at those kind of solutions for the synchronization, two things keep in mind. One is the oscillator's dynamic behavior. Another one is the holding over capacity. I heard some customer told me to say, I don't need the holding over capacity because assume the GNSS signal never lose. This kind of thing, today not happen, maybe tomorrow. So make sure that holding over capacity is the important. Also, today, we have all kinds of the choice for users to pick it up. So make sure you pick up the right uh, the oscillator. Call for auction. This one is the email. Uh, it's the, our website. You may just contact, uh, contact us there. We have the contact uh, the page there. Also, if you like, you can talk to me either, on, uh, either today or tomorrow, anytime. Thank you so much. I'm on time. <laughs>